Hey everybody, this is what everybody emailed me and left me a comment about. That's about going on to uh, level two on uh, the lost secrets of Pythagorean incommensurability and proportionality. Superficially, incommensurability and proportionality are kind of the same thing, but they're not. They refer to something a lot more sublime than that, and then you have to get into metaphysics. And this is, of course, how we apply retroductive analysis to the understanding of nature. Over here to the right, I have some things, a list between 1 and phi, which are all equal to 1, because 1 is the phi is, phi is to 1. We have phi to the power of negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1, phi, phi squared, and 5 q and 5 is to 1 is 1 is to 5. So all of these are different proportionalities that the ancient Pythagoreans actually said um, were a different uh, uh, aspects of uh, natura naturans, or of Mother Nature. As you remember in the last section, from Plato's Republic 509d to 511, the secret hidden therein, which none of these so-called brilliant academicians ever discovered, is it uh, you take a... go ahead and look it up. Plato's Republic 509D to 511. Then I'll have you look up the golden angle, which is 137.5077. We'll talk about that in a second. You uh, take a uh, line, you divide it unevenly, you take each one of those sections and divide it unevenly, and we have a proportionality of phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which in totality is equal to phi cubed, and also to equal to 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, which is 0 0.23606, but 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 equals phi cubed. And here we have the perfect proportionality of the division of the cosmos noitos and the cosmos asitos. To keep it simple and short, the cosmos asitos is a reference to the metaphysical universe and the cosmos um, asitos is a reference, of course, to the existential or empirical cosmos, or universe. And, of course, we talked about this specific triangle, which is the 108, 36, 36 triangle. By the way, 108, of course, adds up to 9, and 36 adds up to 9, and it just keeps going on and on. By the way, fundamentally, I'm not going to get into that in this video. This is the secret behind Nikola Tesla's uh, secret of 3, 6, and 9, as so far as the secret of the universe, but that's a matter for another discussion. Here we're going to look at a couple circles over here on the left, and then we're going to get back to this specific triangle, which is the only perfect uh, incommensurable geometry with absolute perfect proportionality from every aspect um, regarding the universe, and is also, too, the geometry of life and water. Um, I don't know if you know anything about phylotaxis or uh, plants and how uh, leaves manifest. And I'll give you a couple examples that everybody is familiar with here on the iPad. Like we can actually see this in a pine cone. You see that particular pattern? Or in a sunflower, that particular phylotaxis, the arrangement and the particular geometric arrangement therein. And you can look up on a Google search or a Bing search the uh, golden angle which is 137.5077. So if we do a division of a circle here, of the golden angle, here we have at the top 137.5077. We could say 137.5 for short, and the remainder is 222.5 degrees. What we have now is a perfect proportionality of 1 to phi. Now, everything that we actually see is beautiful and perfect proportionality in nature, which is the golden angle. You can also, too, type in golden angle is 137.5077, which is equal to phi, or 1.618, but phi is to 1 is 1 is to phi. So when we say 1, or we say phi, we're really not talking about two different things, rather the expression of one and the same thing under different proportionalities and modalities of manifestation vis-a-vis -vis the cosmos ethitos or the cosmos novitos. So we have a proportionality of 1 to phi. Now if we take another circle, there's another angle which is equal to 1, not just 137.5077, but 85 degrees, and this keeps popping up in nature. And down here we have 137.5077, and on the other side we have 137.5077. 5077. We can actually draw those out like that if we want. 
put the triangle in there. So now we have something interesting. We have here 85 degrees, which is equal to 1, which of course is equal to phi. But 85 degrees times phi, or 85 times 1.618033, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is equal to this, the golden angle. So we have 85 times phi equals the golden angle of 137.5077. Also, 2 phi and phi plus 1 equal phi cubed. So we can actually represent that which people call the golden angle or the golden section or perfect incommensurability and proportionality between the agathon or the absolute. And we can't forget about the euristos dias or the indefinite diet, i.e. AD, which is not 2. There's the reason why the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are 1 and 1. It goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc., etc., etc. So we know that 137.5077 is the golden angle, which is equal to 1, and phi cubed plus phi equals, excuse me, phi squared plus phi equals phi cubed. Too many phi's in there, right? So, which is, of course, equal to pan. Oria, or Gaia. The Greeks over here, we can take a look over here on the right really quickly. And this would take too long to explain. Phi squared, phi to the power of negative 3.23606 is equal to the Euristos Dias. Phi to the power of negative 2.381966 is equal to the Psyche, or Soul. Phi to the power of negative 1, or 1 over phi, is equal to uh, gross matter, or Heil. Uh, phi is a proportionality of 1 as manifest, because phi is to 1 as 1 is to phi. Phi squared actually would take way too long to explain. That would be a matter for discussing in a third level. Phi cubed, however, 4.23606 is equal to pan, or ria, or gaia. Ultimately, the expression of the agathon, or the absolute, against its extrinsic attribute, which is phi to the power of negative 3, which is equal to phi cubed. Yep, very simple. This is tattooed on the inside of my right wrist, which is my discovery, which is the expression of um, Pythagorean, Platonic, Neoplatonic, etc., etc., um, monistic monism, which, of course, eliminates out the need for uh, original cause or prima causa or original sin. Now we're going to get on to, hopefully, the interesting part. I hope I haven't bored you to death. I've tried to keep this really simple. And I'm going to try to draw circles freehand with this marker leaning over here. And it's not going to be that easy, but I hope I accomplish it. Yeah, I'm going to draw something inside of this particular triangle. This is the only perfect geometry in the entire universe. My circles aren't perfect. Sorry about that. But once again, we have here by the way, 1 is equal to phi to the power of negative 3, which is equal to phi, which is also 2 equal to phi cubed, which is equal to 1. This is a perfect proportionality. And the Euristos Dios of incommensurability and the great secret, quote-unquote, of the Pythagoreans. And you won't find this in any book or in any article whatsoever. Right in here, of course, I drew the water molecule. Not a coincidence. Nope, not a coincidence at all. Now, if I draw, I'm going to use my ruler here, but I don't think I have to. I kind of draw right through there, and then right through here again. Yeah, anyway, this whole blue triangle, of course, is the 108, 36, 36 degree triangle. This in triplicate, of course, makes up the Pythagorean pentagram. This is a proportionality of sloping sides of 1 and 1 with a base of phi, which is, of course, equal to phi cubed, which is, of course, equal to 1 over phi to the power of negative 3. Here we have hydrogen, here we have hydrogen, and here we have oxygen. So here we have water. Now, with these new triangles right here, which are the exact same thing as the whole, once again, incommensurability, we have three lines, right here, the base, which of course is equal to phi. We now have something interesting where this base becomes 1, this base becomes phi, and this base becomes 2 plus, which is the Euristos Dias, by the way. Not numerical 2, but the Euristos Dias, plus phi to the power of 
negative 2, which is 2.381966, yes? Which we have right up here, 1 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5 to the power of negative 2, which I'm sure it's total coincidence, equals 5, which the ancient Pythagoreans, Platonus, Iamblichus, Demetius, Numenius, Syrianus said was the completion of the entire universe, and that is true, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Of course, the only number missing is the number 4. 4, of course, is time. Time isn't real. Time doesn't exist in nature. Time is a measure that human beings came up with relative to magnitudes. So here we have three different sections. Yeah, we have a section of 1, a section of phi, which passes through the plane of inertia of the hydrogen atoms. The plane of inertia of the first passes through the middle of the oxygen atom. Yeah, and by the way, you, if you actually look up the geometry, I get asked this all the time, and I've written about this endlessly. They'll say, well, a water molecule is 104.5 degrees. And that's assuming that you actually pass it right here like that, through the middle, rather than the outside of the charge of the molecule itself. So it's actually 108, but if you could say it's 104.5, it means they're measuring it from the center of the oxygen and hydrogen, not that anybody in the universe has ever technically measured it, of course, certainly nobody on Earth. So that would be 104. But the actual charge and the geometry of the totality of the water molecule is the 108, 36, 36. So here we have something fascinating, which is not coincidental, that 1 plus 5 plus the Aristos Dias, not numerical 2, plus phi to the power of negative 2 equals 5. Now let's do something a little more interesting here. At least I hope you think it's interesting. Remember back over here where we knew that uh, 1 was representation of 85 degrees? I guess I'm going to have to do that again. I'm going to have to whip out the old ruler. Yeah. I'd like to show you the most interesting part. If I could get it here. I'm going to use the ruler on this one. There's always an incommensurable cut. People say, well, if you're going to cut this, you're not going to slice it down the middle. That's not an incommensurable cut. The incommensurable cut is where you make this Mandelbrot mirror image in perfect sectional proportionality identical to the whole, where the smaller and the whole are in perfect proportionality, and the only way you can cut it is such that each one of these consequential triangles becomes identical to the whole. Yeah, which is a cut like that. Well, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So now we've got something new. Let's uh, try to redraw our water molecule once again. Freehand circles, not so easy. Humble apologies that they're not that straight. And we have uh, the uh, plane of inertia between the oxygen, the plane of inertia proportionality between the, uh, the hydrogen, and we have something new. I'm going to try to do this freehand, or it's going to be crooked. Humble apologies. I need to use a different color marker for this one. Now we have a degree which is equal to 1 between the oxygen and the hydrogen equal to 85 degrees right here. And we have something right here, which is equal to the golden angle, 137.5077, where we have this. Sorry, that's drawn freehand, but this is 137.5077, or the golden angle. This is the perfect subdivision of the proportionality, of the perfect geometry, the only perfect geometry in the entire universe. But let's take it a little bit further. Remember, once again, we had the uh, secret of the ancient Pythagoreans, the divided line, where you take a line, you divide it unevenly, each one of those sections unevenly, and you ended up with phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which of course is equal to phi cubed, which is equal to 1 over phi, the power of negative 3. If we had, and I didn't draw this perfectly, feel free to make another little triangle here, which would be the outside of the hydrogen, right here, but I didn't draw it that way should be drawn kind of like that. Sorry, this is what you get when you try to make precise cuts and lines freehand. Anyway, we have now this section, which is equal to phi. Um, we have uh, this section, which is equal to 1. Okay, 
this section right here. This is now equal to 1, and this is equal to 1 over phi. Perfect incommensurability, top to bottom, from base to apex. The apex, of course, is equal to 1. But up here we have 1, but this is also 2 equal to phi that we know. But the totality of the expression is 1 over phi to the power of negative 3. Look up uh, the golden angle, by the way, 137.5077. So, let me erase these little circles over here. Phi to the power of negative 3 equals 1 equals phi equals phi cubed equals life, which equals incommensurability. However, explaining incommensurability would take some time. I'm going to do this freehand. I don't need a ruler for this. Even though it's going to be crooked, who cares, right? The point is getting the point across. 1, 1, 1, or... 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 equals phi equals phi cubed. This is, of course, phi equals life. Yeah. Phi cubed, of course, is equal to pan, rhea, gaia, zoe, because the totality of everything within the metaphysical universe and the physical universe, which is phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, I drew that incorrectly, it should be over there, there we go, is equal to phi cubed, or 4.23606. That which makes life possible, the perfect intersection between totality, the Euristostaius, the cosmos the thetos and the cosmos noethos, the empirical universe, the metaphysical universe, and that which makes it proportionality possible, or like basically saying, trying to keep things simple, you know, fitting up jigsaw puzzle pieces. How does the jigsaw puzzle of life work? Well, we would have something that always fits proportionality-wise relative to something else, which is 1 and, excuse me, 1 and this, of course, would be life. Or we, could say pan, we could say actually phi cubed over here, actually. Say phi cubed. We could refer to this as pan or gaia or rhea. The only way by which one and phi are able to merge is the eoristos dias, because phi is to one as one is to phi. Anyway, you should uh, look up, um, once again, the circle here. The golden angle of 137.5077, which is equal to 1, 137.5077, or 137.5. The remainder is 222.5, which is equal to phi, or 1.618. But if you divide that out again, we have 137.5077. But the golden angle, which is representative of 1, is 85 degrees. But... This is also 2 phi, 137.5077. 137.5077 equals phi, but 137.5077 is also 2, the 85 degrees of 1. 1 is the phi, as phi is the 1. The only thing whereby which life is possible, i.e. water, it's right here. And the only perfect proportionality of same is this. Isn't that interesting? We have phi, 1, and 1, and 1 over phi. Isn't that interesting? I'm sure that's a total coincidence, though. You know, it's just a total coincidence that so many things which make life possible match up perfectly. This is the lost secret of the Pythagoreans. If you'd like me to go to level 2, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope I didn't overcomplicate this at all. I tried to have a little key over here. Explaining phi squared takes a little bit longer, however, but 2.618, that one's not as easy to explain. Neither is incommensurability easier to explain. There's numerical 2 and there's the Euristos Dias. That also, too, really confuses the heck out of people. They should never confuse the two because 
the first five digits in the Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five, right here. Both of these are the absolute. This is the agathon of the absolute, and this is the eudistostaya, so the extrinsic attribute of the absolute. This would be akin to light, and this would be akin to illumination. It goes monad, mind, uh, magnitude, matter, and man. Not literally man, I just said man, because it also starts with a man. Uh, in M, this of course would be ontos, or being. Yep. Monad, mind, Number two, magnitude and matter. The only number missing, of course, is four, because four is time. Time doesn't exist, according to Mother Nature. Time is a concept dreamt up by human beings to keep track of masses and magnitudes and their measure. But the second one is not two. It is the attribute of the first one. Numerical two is magnitude. Magnitude and matter, by the way, are one thing, just as the first two ones are one thing, principle and attribute. This would be the uh, cosmos asitos principle and attribute, almost, which is two and three, which are really one thing. And by the way, this is where the trinity comes from. Let's do this once again before closing this out. The trinity is really ancient. If you think the trinity is original to some sort of religion, then you're mistaken. Two, three, five. These two are one thing. This is one thing, and this is the last thing. This is the absolute and its attribute. This is uh, magnitude and matter. And this is the synthesis of the absolute and its attribute, magnitude and matter, which is being. This is the trinity. The first, the second, and lastly, the synthesis of the, of the first and the second. So, anyway, hope you like this video. If you want to email me or any donation, that's in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.